All right, praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, I see people coming in on Facebook. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody on Zoom. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Uh, if you see, if you look in the contacts list and you see your friend, your family member that's not on here, call them, text them, tell them to get on here <laughs> uh, so they can join us for service. We're going to go ahead and begin. Praise God for you all joining us here today. Uh, we're going to jump right in and uh, see what God has for us today. We've got something different. This is on Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. So praise God for all of you, you all, and the, the service and the work that, that you have done uh, in each and every one of our lives. And so let's start with the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you. We praise your God for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you, God, for your ability, your God, the, uh, the anointing that you have placed upon our lives, oh God, the direction that you've given to our lives. And we ask, oh Lord, that right now, Lord God, that you use us for your glory. Bless each and every mother. Bless each and every grandmother. Every auntie, every person, oh God, that is, that is standing in the place of a mother. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for, for the work, Lord God, that you've done in them and through them. We ask, oh God, that you touch, Lord God, Lord God, uh, every, every child, oh God, that is, that is dealing with the loss of a mother, oh God, every adult that is dealing with the loss of a mother. We ask, oh God, that you give them peace and calm, even during this time. Give them strength, oh God, to make it through the day, Lord God, that they might be able Lord God, to be a blessing and encouragement to somebody else. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining us here today. We got something different uh, for you all today uh, on this Mother's Day. Uh, we're going to start out with uh, uh, our, our, our poet here, uh, by the way. And so we're going to start out with uh, Deacon uh, Edith Clay. She's going to come forth, uh, and she is going to give us a poem. And then we got another treat uh, for you all after that. So, uh, can, Sister Clay, can, I, can we hear you? God is good. Thank you. you got me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. As I thought of Mother's Day, so much went through my mind. Mothers give so much to us. Blessed be the ties that bind. Mothers were set aside as special to give birth, nourish, and to love by the best role model there could be, Jesus in heaven up above. They are counselors when there are problems, doctors to help heal hurt and pain, teachers, chauffeurs, coaches, friends, there to dry tears that sometimes fall like rain. Yes, mothers take on so many roles, for there is so much that they do. And when a father may not be present, some take on that role too. They try to be there for their children, to teach them wrong from right, and to remind them to trust in Jesus, even when they are out of sight. Just in case you are blessed enough, to have your mother still here on earth. Then let her know how important she is. You know how much she's worth. For all those other mothers who are always there to share their love and time with the rest of us, God bless you for being there. There need not be a given time or even a given day just know that mothers are special in God's eyes every day. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Deacon Edith Clay. Praise God for those wonderful words and, uh, and the, letting allow the Lord to use you. Amen. In that passion, we praise God for that. Now, I told you this is going to be a different. Uh, this is going to be a different uh, type of service here. So we're going to do something a little different this morning. Uh, we have uh, Brother Emmanuel Harrison, uh, my nephew. He's going to come and he's going to deliver. Uh, he's going to minister uh, right now uh, to you all. So I hope you all, all you mothers are ready. I hope you all, you mothers are blessed by this. But man.
All right, praise God. Amen. Praise God for Brother Manny. Come on, put your hands together, Brother Manny. Amen. Praise God for him. Amen. And uh, so we, we, we praise God for all of our, our wonderful mothers today. Amen. Terrific job, uh, Manny. And terrific job, uh, Deacon Clay. Praise God for you both. Uh, and allow the Lord to use you this morning. Praise God for that. All right, we're going to jump into the, the Word of God here uh, this morning. And uh, so I want you to turn with me, can to Proverbs chapter number 31. Proverbs chapter number 31 is where we're going to go. Proverbs 31. And we're going to look at verses 26 through 31. Uh, you can just uh, look there and, and uh, focus your attention there. Proverbs 31, uh, 26 through 31. All right, it says, uh, She opened, openeth her mouth uh, with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou ex excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. All right, praise God. Wonderful word that we hear this morning. Well, here we are two months into this uh, time of, of quarantine, and, and uh, some people are finding it uh, unbearable to be in quarantine uh, on this Mother's Day. On Mother's Day, how are you going to be here in quarantine on Mother's Day? Man, uh, people find it unbearable, but uh, I think we're just getting a taste of what mothers uh, have been dealing with uh, all these years and when we were children. I think that's what we're dealing with. They, I'm sure they felt like many times they were in quarantine. Uh, somebody come and get me up out of this house with these kids. <laughs> Before I take one, I'm out. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we were always hungry and, uh, Mom, can I have a snack? Mom, 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 can I have a snack? Uh, you know, always asking for something, always wanting to go somewhere. That's what children do, always touching something. Uh, that's why when you went to the store, uh, they would always give you that talk before you went in there. They would always give you that talk, don't touch nothing. That's what, that's what you would get that talk as. Don't touch nothing. Don't ask for nothing because you ain't getting nothing. Uh, that's what, what we were told. Mothers or, or, or something else. And so you, you, that's, what, uh, that's what you see many times. And, uh, you hear you see kids having a temper tantrum and uh, begging, pleading, uh, asking in the stores. And so, but uh, mothers are so awesome. Uh, they handle it all with grace and calm. Well, most of them, they handle it <laughs> with grace and with calm. But, but listen, whether you, whether you know it or not, uh, mother's, motherhood is not easy. Uh, motherhood is not easy. You, uh, you all give birth to this little person that grows inside of you for nine months. It's causing you to have weird cravings and stretch your body every which way. Uh, uh, and that's only the beginning. <laughs> you would think that that would be the end, but that's just the beginning. Uh, and then, then you have to, to nurture this little person, feed this little person, teach this little person, change those stinky diapers, teach this little person how to survive on their own. Oh, and you only have 17 years, 12 months, and 31 days to do it. <laughs> that's, that's all you get. It wasn't until I got a little older we started to have our own children and that I realized how many many of the things that my mother had to go through uh, and, and still has to go through to take care uh, of, of, of her children. Because you all don't, uh, you, all you do is you, when you think of, uh, of, of uh, raising a child at 18, uh, it doesn't stop there. It continues on. Your duty doesn't end there. Mothers, if your children are older, over 18, your duties don't just end just there. I discovered somewhere along the way that motherhood is not a job. Uh, throughout all these, these years, I discovered that motherhood is not a job. Uh, there's not enough money uh, in the world to pay you mothers for what you do. There's not enough money. So motherhood is not just a job. Motherhood is a calling, is what I discovered somewhere along the way. And this morning, that's what I want to talk to you about a little bit, is that a mother's calling is what I want to talk to you about 
uh, just for a, a few minutes of, of your time. Motherhood is a call. Every Christian has a calling. Every Christian. A calling is the divine purpose directed by God to fulfill his will in the earth. Uh, it, it's, it's an assignment given by God. Luke chapter number 9. Verse number uh, nine, verse number 23 says, if anyone could come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. That's what the word of God says. Motherhood is a special and unique calling, unlike any other. Neil Anderson uh, once said this. He said, uh, motherhood is not a hobby. He said, it is a calling. It is not something that you can do if you can squeeze time in. It is what God gave you time for. Is what he said. Motherhood is not for the faint of heart. Motherhood, it, it takes courage uh, to be a, a mother. It takes wisdom uh, to be a mother. The first thing that Proverbs says in these verses that we read here this morning uh, in Proverbs 31, 26, it says, she opened up her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. That means uh, out of, uh, uh, of every godly mother's mouth uh, should come wisdom. Hear this, there, there's wisdom uh, in, in the mouth of a mother. It takes wisdom to raise children. This calling, this calling that you have mothers, it requires wisdom. This calling requires wisdom. Not, you, you can't do it without wisdom. You know, when you raise children, uh, none of them are the same. They're all quirky. Uh, they all act different. They think different. They got different needs. They got different wants. They got different desires. That's why the Bible talks about wisdom so much, because we need it. We need it. We need wisdom. We need to share wisdom uh, to our younger moms. We need to share wisdom to the moms that are not equipped. We need to share wisdom uh, with one another that we're all able uh, to reach the place in which God would have for us to be. We've got to share this wisdom. Uh, it is through wisdom uh, that, we, that, we, that we learn to survive. It's because of, of, of wisdom that every mother has not killed their kid. That's <laughs> that's why we, we got that, the, 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 the Lord gives us that kind of wisdom. Uh, wisdom uh, gives us all the ability uh, to survive. Uh, it, it, this, this wisdom that every mother uh, is, is, is given. Proverbs 4 and 7 says this wisdom is the principal thing. The Bible talks a lot about wisdom. It says wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get an understanding. God always gives mothers wisdom so they can uh, say it in a way that you can understand it. Uh, moms have a way of breaking things down into little bite-sized pieces. Moms have a way to break things down uh, so that you can understand. They got a way uh, of, of presenting information to you uh, so you can see and understand where they are coming from. Uh, sometimes they've got to whisper it. Sometimes they've got to yell it. They've got to open up their mouth and, 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 and boisterously tell you uh, what they are thinking. Uh, sometimes they've got to say, do you hear the words that are coming out of my mouth? Sometimes uh, they've got to grab you to get a hold of you to get your attention. But contrary to popular opinion, moms have always been down the road uh, before you even uh, got in, uh, before you even put your shoes on. Contrary to popular opinion, moms have already been down that road that you're going. They've already been there. They've already done that. They already got the t-shirt. They know the game before you even got the pieces set up. Uh, and so they use wisdom uh, and, 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 and a little mental karate many times to, to get you to listen uh, so you don't make the same mistakes that your uncle or your brother or your cousin, your sister uh, did. Even if you don't want to hear it, just listen. Even if you don't really understand it, just listen. Uh, that you, even if you don't really understand what they're talking about, just listen. Listen to their advice. Uh, Proverbs 31 and 26 says, in her tongue is the law of kindness. Uh, it, it may not always be nice and sweet, uh, but, but she will speak truth to you. That's what mothers do. Mothers will speak truth to you. They're going to tell you what you need to hear when you need to hear. Her advice is going to come from a place of love. If there's anybody on your team, it should be your mother. Uh, her advice is going to come from a place of love and experience. Proverbs 19 uh, and 20 says this, listen to advice and accept discipline. And at the end, you will be counted among the wise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, that, 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 that wisdom uh, that, that she's giving you, that advice that she's giving you, uh, the discipline that she's giving you, 
accepted, you'll be counted amongst the wise. Next, we got to keep moving. Proverbs 31, uh, 27 and 28, it says this, she looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. I know mothers, you like that one right there. <laughs> that, that, that he, that your, your husband uh, will, will praise you, will acknowledge what you do, that somebody is noticing uh, what you do. Your children will arise up and call you blessed. Your children will come back and say, thank you. Listen, whether you are married or not, it seems like every mother never has a day off. Even on vacation, mothers seem like they never have a day off. Uh, one thing I want you to see is that this calling that you have, mothers, it, it requires and it demands hard work and courage. Uh, it takes courage to be uh, a mother. What I'm telling you this morning is that uh, that a great and godly mother never uh, lets moss grow under her feet. Uh, I heard a phrase many times that a mother's work is never done. And so I started looking up some things and I, I found something uh, from, I believe it was from salary.com. It was estimating that the average mom, uh, how much the average mom should be paid that is not being paid. <laughs> That's what it was, it was asking. It said the average mom should be really be paid uh, between $162,000 and $178,000 a year, six figures, should be paid this, this amount uh, per year just from uh, what they do. This is the compensate uh, for her being your Uber, your cook, uh, your coach, your counselor, uh, your teacher, your warden, your disciplinarian, your greatest advocate, uh, your most honest, honest critic uh, that you could ever meet. Uh, she is sometimes your confidant, sometimes. She is your best friend. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Uh, it's, it's the godly mother that keeps everybody in the house going and encouraged, even though sometimes she needs a little bit of encouragement herself. If you don't do anything else today, just call your mom and just encourage her. Let her know, thank you. For what you did. Thank you for every woman. Thank you for every punishment. Thank you for, for everything that you have done uh, for me, the straight and setting me, setting me straight. Uh, thank you uh, for that. I, I want to encourage every mother uh, this morning. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep encouraging your sons. Keep encouraging your daughters. Keep encouraging those that God has placed under your charge. Keep answering uh, the calling that is upon your life. Keep answering the call to mold and to shape the next generation. Deuteronomy 31 and 6 uh, talks about a little bit about that courage that, uh, that, that, that mothers have in me. It says, it says, be strong and be of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them, for the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Uh, it takes courage to be a mother. It takes courage to be somebody uh, that, that's responsible for somebody else. That's why the mother is able to be confident uh, when they say, I brought you in this world. I'm going to take you out of here. That's why they, they have confidence to say, listen, I, I'm the one that, that changed your, your nasty diapers. I'm the one that can tell you what you need to do. And so even when the children leave the house and move out on their own, God is still with you, mothers. God is still with you. God is still on your side. God is still providing for you. God still has his hand upon you. And if God still has his hand upon you, God still has his hand upon your children. Proverbs 22 and 6 says this, train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That means rest assured, mothers. Rest assured, everything you put in them is still there. Everything you put into that boy or that girl, it's still there. You just keep praying for them. Watch God do, do what he does. You just keep believing. Uh, keep interceding for them and watch God uh, move on your behalf. Watch God. It, it takes tremendous courage to be a mother. Courage to say some things that, that you know need to be said, even though you know it's going to hurt. That's love. Sometimes love says you, you got to say some things that, 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 that it, it might be, be a little ouchy. It might be a little difficult, but you got to say it anyway because it needs to be said. Courage to stand up to, uh, to, to teachers or police officers or judges and, and, and that, that say your child is a lost cause. And let me say this right here. I, I'm tired of seeing mothers on TV grieving over their lost child because they've been uh, shot and killed in the streets. You know, when you, when you look at the affairs that's been happening uh, over the last uh, few years, the last few decades, and last, the, the, the last century, if you would. Just, just recently, I, I'm not Aubrey, 
uh, in, in, down in Georgia, Philando Castillo, Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, Tamir Rice, and the list goes on and on and on and on. It's time that we stop just talking about how terrible things are and demand justice for our sons and our daughters. Get out in the streets uh, and not only make sure that they are doing the right thing, but also make sure uh, that every officer and every uh, state official and, and every person that want to take the law into their own hands uh, has, to, has to reckon uh, for what they uh, have have done and so uh, but but it's always mothers that are left standing there being courageous standing and telling the, the, the true meaning of who their their son or who their daughter is sometimes it's a mother's courage to keep on believing even when the evidence appears contrary to your faith uh, you, yeah yeah other people might see a, a, a drug addict other people might see somebody who was a, who was constantly committing crimes or they just you know they might see somebody who was who, who is not doing what they what, what you believe that they should be doing. Hey, well, that child is lazy, that, that, that man or that woman is lazy. Uh, but it takes a, mother, a mother's courage to say, listen, my child is able uh, and, and is going to be great. My child is going to be going to make something out of themselves. My, my, my son's going to be a great father to his child. My, 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 my daughter's going to be a great mother uh, to her children. And so, uh, and so it, it, it takes courage uh, to believe like that. Listen. God is not done with them yet, mothers. Hold on. Don't let go. God is still a deliverer. God is still a way maker. God is still a present help in the time of trouble. And, and there's no addiction, no mental condition, no sickness, no disease, no problem, nothing that is able uh, to pluck them out of the hands of the almighty God. There is nothing that the power of God cannot do. And so just, just continue being bold enough to believe and claim every promise uh, of God. John, first John, uh, verse number, chapter number five says this, first John 5, 14 and 15 says this, and this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we'll have whatsoever we ask. And we know that we'll have the petitions that we desired of him. Courageously claim their salvation mothers, claim their healing, uh, claim uh, them being set free from alcoholism, claim them being set free from opioid addiction, claim uh, for them to, uh, to, to get their life together uh, and, and begin doing things uh, in, in, in a responsible manner. Isaiah 54 and 17 says, no weapon that is formed against thee is able to prosper. One day, uh, these, those kids are going to come back and say, thank you, mom. One, one day, those kids are going to come back uh, and they're going to appreciate uh, what you have done, the sacrifices uh, that you have made. Thank you for the spankings. Thank you for the punishments. Thank you for coming to every parent-teacher conference, uh, even though you know it was going to be bad news. Thank you for coming uh, to those conferences. Thank you uh, for, 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 for stepping out there uh, and, and, and still being on their side, even if nobody else was on their side, being uh, their defender. Uh, we we got to get out of here in just a little bit, but uh, let, me, let me say this also before we go. Proverbs 31. 29 through 31, many daughters have done virtuously, but thou exceed, excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. Uh, and then it says this, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. I'll say it again, a woman that feareth the Lord, that gives reverence to God, that worships the Lord, that, that, that honors the word of God, that lives according to the word of God, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I take that to mean this, mothers, that your calling, your, uh, the, the work that you have done, and it will not be in vain. It is not in vain. This calling has its just rewards. But that's what I'm trying to get you to understand. Your labor is not in vain, mothers. There, there's, a, there's a song that says this. It says, your labor is not in vain, though the ground underneath you is cursed and stained. Your planting, your, your planting and your reaping are never the same, but your labor is not in vain. Scriptures go on to say that the, that the favor of, 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 of people, it comes uh, and it goes. Beauty, the, the word of God says, is, is vain. Uh, that, that, you know, that just means that beauty is just skin deep. But, but mothers, there is something in you more than just your outward appearance that, that reflects your beauty here in, on this Mother's Day. It's, a, it's the heart 
that you have, your care for others. It's the heart that you have uh, and the unconditional love that you have for your children and those that come under your care. It's your patience and your humility. It's your selflessness. It's your truth telling uh, that makes you beautiful. But, but above all that, Proverbs 31 and 30 says, a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the fruit of your hands. You deserve all the peace, all the prosperity, all uh, the material items, all of the uh, uh, of the, uh, the 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 the, uh, the the things that we can that we can pour upon you on this Mother's Day, and let her own words praise her in the gates. God bless every mother. God bless every grandmother on this day. Give them strength to keep being the matriarch of the family. Bless those, that bless every foster mom uh, that is stepping in the place of a mother that is not ready or able uh, to care for their children. Bless every stepmom that stepped in the place of this uncomfortable position. But now I gotta be a mother to this child I did not give birth to, but now I gotta take this child on uh, to be my own. God bless every stepmother. God bless every foster mother. Give them patience to allow uh, the emotional wounds to heal. Give them uh, the, 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 the strength uh, to keep sharing wisdom, even though it might be rejected. God bless every single mom. They give them the resources that they need to support and the support that they need to raise those, ch those children and raise them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. God bless every child and every adult that has lost their mom on this day. God bless every child and every adult that has lost their mother. What, the, what your mother has placed on the inside of you, it is not lost because they are gone. It is still there. Those lessons are lifelong lessons. Those lessons are things that, that she wanted to put on the inside of you. She wanted to plant within you because she knows that she knew at a time, there's going to come a time where you're going to have to stand on your own. And so she wanted to share with you and pour into you and give you strength, give you ability and give you courage so that you will be able to stand that you can no longer stand right there beside you. Yeah, I'm not saying that every mom is perfect. Every, every mother has a flaw. I said a flaw because I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> not multiple. <laughs> but every mother is not perfect. No mother is perfect. Every mother makes mistakes. You know, children don't come with an instru instruction manual. You know, they, they're all different. We try to do the best we can. Uh, you know, some, some, sometimes she might say things that, you know, she would like to take back and she might regret later and might have to apologize. So don't, don't dwell on it. Don't, and mothers, don't dwell on it. Don't beat yourself up for the things you say that you, can't, that you can't pull back and put back in your mouth before it's out there. Just ask God for forgiveness and ask your child for forgiveness and move forward. And they understand over, overarching, but above anything else, that you, that you love them. That's what translates more than, than one word said in anger. Uh, one, one argument, one fight uh, made in anger. Dr., uh, my, the late Di Dr. Maya Angelou once said this. She said, I did then what I knew how to do. But now that I know better, I do better. All you can do, and all any of us can do, is strive to do better. I strive to be better as a father. You need to strive to be better as a mother. Strive to be better as a brother, as, as a sister, a sibling. Uh, strive to be better as an as a auntie, an uncle. Strive to be better as a grandmother, a grandfather. Strive to be better. And whatever it is that you do, strive to be better. When you know better, do better. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. You are who you are. You are who God created you to be. You have become who you have become because of the things that have formed and fashioned you into who you are. But I'm so glad that God is who he is. There's nothing too hard for God because of who he is. Because of who he is, no matter what it is that we face, no matter what our, our mothers face, our families face, there is nothing that is too hard for God. He can even get that baby daddy together. He can. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. And so as we close, let's do right by mothers. 
Let's do better by our mothers. Let's look after them as they get older. Let's get let's let's let's, let's help them out a little bit uh, around the house. Let's uh, let's 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 care for the need. You, you know, they may not ask you for help, but when you see the need, strive to meet the need. Strive to do something for your mother, not just on Mother's Day. That's that that, that that's fleeting. That's passing. But all throughout the year, strive to do something and pour back into the one that poured so much into you. Ephesians 6 says this, Ephesians 6, 1, 2, and 3. It says, children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandments with promise, that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. You want to live a long life that is pleasing to God. Do right by your mother on this Mother's Day. Do right by your father. I invite you this morning, if you have not given your life to the Lord, to do so today. Ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, If thou could, will confess with thy mouth and believe uh, and with the, the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt believe with thy heart, the Lord Jesus, uh, that, that God raised him up from the dead, that thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Don't wait until you got it all together. Don't wait until mom is, is on her, 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 her deathbed and then you say, oh, I'm going to give my life to the Lord now. One day, you been, how long have you been saying that? Mom, one day, I'm going to give my life to the Lord. One day, when I get it all together, one day, don't wait. Do it today. The Bible says that they hear my voice, hard and not your heart. Today is a good day. Every day is a good day to give your life to the Lord. So right where you are, where you are, I'm going to pray for every mother, pray for every child, and pray for those that have decided and made their decision. You don't have to be in a sanctuary, in a church building, for you to give your life to the Lord. You can do so right there where you are. So right there where you are, let's pray. Good Lord, we thank you for those, oh God, that have, that have decided to repent of their sins, have decided to give their life to the Lord, uh, and, and, to, and to admit the, to the cause of Christ. Lord God, to those that, that, that have been waiting a long time to repent of every sin, uh, Lord God, the, the, the people that they may have harmed, the people that, most, oh God, they may have stolen or, or hurt, uh, stolen from, or the, the people that they may have hurt along the way, Lord God, we, we seek your forgiveness, oh God, from anything, Lord God, that is outside of the will of God. We ask, oh God, that you cover each and every one of them, Lord God, with your precious blood. Cleanse them with your precious blood. Repentance means sorry enough to quit. We all need to start somewhere. And we start with repentance, oh God. We confess with our, with our mouth. We believe in our heart. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you, oh God, for bringing salvation to each and every person, oh God, under the sound of my voice, oh God, that has a willingness to give their life to you. Nobody has to lay hands on them, oh God, because you've already shed your precious blood on Calvary for them. But you didn't stay there, Lord God, on that old rugged cross. They placed you in a borrowed tomb, but you got up victorious and all power is given unto me. We thank you, O God, because you got up, we can get up. Because there's hope in you, Lord God. There is hope for each and every one of us. We thank you and we praise you, O God, for every family represented here today. Every family, Lord God, that is affected, Lord God, by virus. Every family, O God, that is affected by grief. Lord God, every family, O God, that is grieving this morning. Lord God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you give them strength, give them courage, give them the ability, O oh God, to keep standing on your word and find strength in you. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you have done for our families, in our families, through our families. Touch our mothers, O oh God. Give them long life. Give them health, strength, and ability. We thank you, God, all you're going to do in us and through us at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all so much for, for joining us here today. Uh, praise God for you all, uh, and you, you, you could have went anywhere else to hear the word of God this morning. So, so thankful and, and, and uh, glad that you decided uh, to stop by here uh, and hear the word of God. If you are moved to uh, to, to to give, uh, you can feel free to give through the. You can download the Bible Way Church app uh, through the App Store or through Google Play. Uh, it's called the Bible Way Church app, uh, or you can go online and uh, and give at the church website BibleWayChurchColumbus.com. You can go there and, and give as well. But we just praise God for you all joining us here 
uh, today. And we praise God for every mother. Happy Mother's Day again. I can't say it enough. Happy Mother's Day again for every, to every mother, to every mother. We praise God for you. So we're going to continue in this format uh, until we, uh, we, we, we feel comfortable. Uh, I know we know our family has and, and our, our people have been affected greatly uh, by the virus. And we just want to be wise. We want to be smart. And we learned that from our mothers, being wise. We learned that from our mothers to be wise. Uh, and so we're going to be wise even in this time, especially with our seniors. We don't want our seniors to, uh, to, uh, to, to be affected by this thing. And so we, we're, we're praying for you all. And uh, we have a meeting set up this week. So uh, those of you on the five-star team, uh, just keep your eyes and ears open for that. You can join me uh, for that tomorrow. We praise God for that. Thank you, everybody, on Facebook. We're going to jump into Zoom. We're going to have a few announcements, but we praise God for each and every one of you again joining us here this morning. God bless you. All right, Brother Mike. Buddy? Hey, Brother Mike, you there? Yes, how are you? God bless you. I'm doing great. All right. Great message. Happy Mother's Day to Sister Island, not you, Mike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy, mother, happy Mother's Day, Debbie. <laughs> Well, and a special happy Mother's Day to uh, Mother Latta. Uh, she, uh, she birthed a son on the day before July 4th. So there, you had to be a firework there, Pastor Tim. Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. you now. <laughs> look at you now. You're, you're still explosive as a pastor, just an explosive ministry. And we appreciate having you. And, and we just say a special happy Mother's Day to Mother Latta uh, for that. And also uh, Mother Pack. Uh, has a birthday tomorrow, and I'm sure you miss her fan, and I'm sure that'll be coming back sometime soon. I feel uh, it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you feel that breeze. Uh, her birthday is tomorrow, so happy birthday, uh, Mother Pack. And, uh, and birthdays this past week, one more time to uh, Brother Chris Layton. I miss his singing voice. Uh, he had a birthday on uh, May 6th. Uh, I miss his uh, wonderful sense of humor. He always makes me laugh and smile, and most of all, his ministry is powerful. So happy birthday one more time to uh, Brother Chris Layton. And also uh, Brother Keith Fincher had a birthday on May 5th. And I love the way he sets the tone for the service anytime he's up there uh, to get us started. And not to mention, he has the, one of the best smiles on the face of the planet. So happy birthday uh, to Keith Fincher. Uh, continue prayers for our choirs and praise and worship teams and the musicians headed by uh, Minister L.G. Scott. Uh, we'll be uh, back at it pretty soon, but uh, uh, just want a special shout out to them. Emmanuel Hairston. Wow. You know, uh, what I saw there was a mother's calling uh, that became a mother's influence. And uh, to have him do that uh, for four and a half minutes, that's a ball of energy right there. That's anointed. So Emmanuel Hairston, uh, thank you for your ministry this morning. And uh, Deacon Maya Angelou. Well, no, Deacon Edith Clay, sorry. <laughs> I get those two confused. Uh, we're always blessed to have her, you know, with her God is good and just her great words that she uh, brings forth. And, um, and also just to let you know that services continue uh, through the many nonprofit uh, agencies. We're going to hear from uh, Monique, uh, Sister Monique in just a few minutes. Happy Mother's Day to you, um, Sister Monique, in advance there. And, um, but Children's Hunger Alliance continues to feed the children with, in association with the Columbus City Schools uh, every uh, Monday through Friday uh, during lunch or breakfast and lunch. So those services continue since school's out for the rest of the year. And the Ohio Summer Food Service Program that kicks in normally in late May, it uh, basically has already started. And uh, that will go through the summer months until school resumes in, in the fall. And I just want to close with one thing I remember from uh, one of our Bible studies uh, somewhere along the way that we do on Wednesday nights. Uh, just pray like it depends on God and work like it depends on you. Amen. God bless everybody. All right. God bless you, Brother Mike. Thank you. Well, we are in for a treat. Happy Mother's Day, Sister Monique. Thank you, Pastor Tim. Happy Mother's Day to all you wonderful sacrificing motivating beautiful praying moms um, this is our day and i want you to bask in it and know that every day is mother's day but today we're setting it aside 
for each one of you to know how special you are. Um, I have great news. The veggie band, we're going to do our soft rollout starting today at Bi Bible Way in our parking lot. You can, as a senior um, right now, because I know a lot of you are not getting online, but you can call me and place an order and I'll deliver it to you today. So um, those are for my senior citizens. Now, the ones of y'all that can get out and drive a car and, and go out and about, come on out and see me at Bible Way. Come see our church. You know, we're still standing strong here on the hilltop being that beacon of hope and we're going to bring food and everything to the area that people can purchase at a very reasonable price uh, i'll go facebook live so for those of you that are my facebook friends monique mccoy i'll go facebook live and i'll put up a price uh, sheet it takes you about 10 minutes to sign up everything the very first time but it gives you the benefits of being um getting the uh, discounts and things after you spend so much. We have a, a, a buyer's program. So after you spend so much and you get something free. So I just want to encourage you all to come out and really support the veggie van. We have everything that you're going to need, need when you're going to Kroger's and so on and so forth to get your fresh food, and some of your shelf, uh, uh, shelf stable items. Um, but you don't have to wait in the line. You don't have to get out your car. We come to you. We do all the work. You just sit there order grab and go that's it we put it in your car and that's all that you're going to have to do um uh on the other notes that we are still do, taking in people and it, you don't have to just live in columbus guys to be a part of the survey to be a part of the study i got busy with a family emergency uh family death actually last week so i apologize for not getting to the ones i said i would get to but i do have two people to, that um already signed up and that's sister pack thank you sister pack and Sister Cecilia, thank you, Sister Cecilia. So um, anyone can do this. They don't have to be a member of Bible Way. There's no age requirement. They just have to be, well, they do have to be at least 18. Um, but anyone can come and do this at, um, uh, do the survey for um, the study for the veggie van. But the veggie van is rolling out today. You'll see the big green tents in our parking lot. You'll see the big green van in our parking lot. And you'll see that you're going to be served with dignity and respect to get good food. So come on out to the Beacon of Hope right here. By the way, the family church that cares about you. And uh, if you need a place in order, uh, Pastor Tim can put my number up there. And I can bring it to my senior, especially the ones that are in uh, the senior villages and the senior apartments. And they can't leave the apartment because they're compromised. I'll set it there at the door. They can come down to the door and pick it up when I buzz them. And then also they're paying. They can pay online with a credit card or I could pick up the cash from them once we get there. So blessings for this week. We are really um, trying to make an impact in this community. And with God, all things are possible. Thank you, Pastor Jim. What's, what's the number, um, Sister Monique? My number is 614-966-0093. 614-966-0093. I am putting it right there in the chat box. So all of you all that are in here, you can still, you can get that, that number. That way you can call her uh, and you can sign up for the survey. Also, you can find out some of the things that's going to be taking place uh, or some of the items that's going to be on the veggie band here uh, in the parking lot today, today from one to four, right? Yes, today from one to four, we'll be in the Bible Way parking lot. All right. So make sure you come by. You don't got to go to Kroger's, Giant Eagle, anywhere else. <laughs> Just you don't even have to get out your car. You don't even got to get out your car. You can just drive through. All right. So just come on through. Uh, and you're going to be blessed today. All right. All right. We're going to end with a word of prayer. Thank you so again so much. God, thank you for all that you have done and, and what we experienced. Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to continue to worship uh, all throughout the day and all throughout the year. We thank you for the presence of your power. We thank you in Jesus' name. Right. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you all so much for joining us here this week. We're going to continue to be back here as, many, as long as we can, and then maybe even longer, just because... Uh, we want to make sure that uh, all of our people are, are safe and, uh, and taken care of, all right? So God bless you. Have a blessed week.